Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Be Brown Bag US. Tonight, we have Ryan Johnson and Nick Marshall, who are going to talk to us about VMware validated designs. This is a multi-session uh, topic. We're not sure if it's going to be two or three sessions, but you are seeing part one. So quick notes, if you want to get in on the conversation, uh, we have handles. Uh, we have several shows on uh, several time zones. Uh, you can see that at B Brown Bag, at B Brown Bag Latin, at B Brown Bag EMEA. And we have a Twitter hashtag, hashtag B Brown Bag. You can ask questions at any time. We are monitoring it in real time. You can ask questions if you are joining us on the show right now. We're also answering questions through the GoToMeeting interface. You can see the times for those other B Brown Bags. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Ryan Johnson, who is at the 10.30 a.m. in Twitter. Ryan, go ahead and tell us your hi. Yeah, so uh, good, good morning, good evening from around the world, across the globe. <laughs> I still remember that from the community podcast days. Uh, yeah, so my name is Ryan Johnson. I'm a uh, staff architect in our integrated systems business unit. And uh, I focus on pretty much all things software-defined data center. And, and tonight, I'm, uh, and if when Nick joins, Nick said he'd be a little bit late, but uh, we're going to talk about the VMware Valley design for the software-defined data center, one of our specific VMware Valley designs. We're going to give you kind of an overview of what the VVDs, as we call them for short, are, why they're important, and kind of give you a little bit of background and history. And then we're going to start diving into, start peeling back the onion um, about the VVD for SDDC, the current release, give you a tech preview on some early access stuff that we've already, we've already released on the communities that you can download. So you got to get a preview of what's coming in the next release because uh, I can share that. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions along the way. We have about three weeks to kind of go through all this material um, so we can take it at a nice leisurely pace. Ask questions, you know, happy to, to, to be very interactive. So, Excellent. And we also, we're two hosts tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm Ariel Sanchez. Uh, Kyle Rudy is with us at KM Rudy on Twitter. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, I'm sitting in as, as co host here helping out Ariel. Um, you know, outside of here, you may know me from, from doing some VMware stuff. I do technical marketing there. And, uh, you know, I'll be here answering questions and, and heckling Ryan. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, while we do have the microphone silence right now, if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand. We'll open up the microphone so you can have your question answered in real time. Uh, with that, Ryan, I'll make you presenter. And it's your turn. Right. Let's see if this works. Share my screen. All right, you guys see this thing? Yes. All right, cool. All right, like I said, um, we are here tonight to talk about the VMware Valley Designs for the Software Defined Data Center. So if you see this logo, little icon floating around, you'll know that that represents VDDs. You'll see it floating around some of our documentation, some of our graphics and such that we do. But that just basically denotes that it's a VVD, right? Um, but we're specifically going to talk about the VMware Valley Design for the Software Defined Data Center. And uh, I'm just going to throw out the, uh, <laughs> the disclaimer because some things may change because I do have some, some early access pieces that we have publicly released on our, on our community, but things are subject to change before the actual GA. Um, again, just a quick introduction. Um, Ryan Johnson, I'm a staff tech marketing architect, so I work in tech marketing. I uh, different BU than, um, than Kyle, but I focus on all things around specifically the VMware Validated Designs and as well as VMware Cloud Foundation, um, multiple certifications on the VMware, VMware stack. If you, if you want to call, if you want to email me, Johnson Ryan at VMware, you can find me on Twitter at, at 10.30am or 10.30am.org. Uh, don't ask me where the name came from. Uh, it's a short story. <laughs> All right. Uh, and Nick is supposed to be joining us. Everyone pretty much knows Nick, um, who Nick is, but those that don't, he's a, a senior SADC integration architect in the same BUs uh, as I work in. He's an architect and actually works on the, the architecture for the VMware Valley Designs, and he's written numerous books on the, the Mastering vSphere series five and uh, five and six, and lab guides, and also the Brownback host. So he should be joining us uh, shortly. 
better. He's leaving, leaving me to leaving me in the dust. So, um, first thing I want to do is kind of start out and you know, you know, ask questions along the way. Uh, Kyle, and Ariel, just let me know if anything comes up you want me to answer. But um, let's talk about kind of what the VMware valid designs are and how they're different from other things you may see out there. Um, so the whole kind of point from VMware Valley Designs, VMware Valley Designs are really kind of at a, a program level within our business unit. Um, and their whole mission in life, because um, I will actually use that word life, that's a very, very important term, um, is that they're prescriptive blueprints, right? And to how to um, build a, how, how to comprehensively deploy as well as operate a software-defined data center based on the VMware technologies. Um, so they're very prescriptive. And there's ways, ways and areas we can uh, we can allow some deviation, and we can talk about those through um, the, these three weeks. Um, but they're very comprehensive. They tell you exactly how to implement it with some very specific guidance, some very specific design objectives and design decisions, um, and they are also pro provide a lot of operational practices. Our entire intent. Here here is to, to look at the industry and say, you know, how can we help customers deploy the software-defined data center at a more rapid rate, right? How can we make it easier for them to deploy and know that, you know, it's going to be supported, it can scale to certain numbers, it can provide certain availability, um, scalability, you know, numbers, and, and be kind of a proven solid technology. But not something that just can just last for now, but can continually uh, be improved upon right, in an iterative fashion. So that's really kind of where we're building the standardized design model that uh, cu the customers can use, you know, our, our experts and our folks out in the community can, can use these um, as a way to deploy the software-defined data center. But, you know, if it doesn't exactly fit your requirements, um, I also look to the community and say, you know, this is a fantastic learning opportunity for you guys. And I would highly encourage you, you know, even if you don't plan to use the VVD and organization or, you know, one of your customers, you know, begin to read it because you will glean a lot of information about how we think about the software defined data center and how VMware sees it being architected. Um, you know, like I said, me and Nick work on, on, on a constant basis and, and we're taking feedback from all all manners of, you know, like I say, all manners of lesser imps and demons. Um, but basically pulling feedback from my field, right? Our partners, our customers, the community, helping to design the, the best standardized design we can for the FHC. Um, and we have to say they're, they're proven robust, right? We put these things through its, 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 its cycles. Um, we have a whole team uh, built within our, our BUs that are constantly scale testing, right, and validation testing. We have test harnesses that are constantly testing these designs based on how we build them to ensure that they're going to live up to the scalability numbers, the load numbers, and everything that we publish and we document, and that you can you know that it's going to be a design that will last based on what we say we're going to provide you. Um, talking about a lot of different broad use cases that these designs can support, uh, VBD is at a base level kind of really a foundation. Uh, but, you know, it's one thing to deploy the software defined data center, um, which we all are here, uh, we, we all cut our teeth on building, you know, infrastructure and solutions. But for businesses, it's got kind of a different context, right? You know, why are you deploying an SDBC? What is the intent for that SDBC? And at the end of the day, you know, how is it differentiating to your business? Some co co some companies, you know, if you deploy infrastructure, maybe that infrastructure will, you know, uh, differentiate your business. Maybe you're a service provider. But for a vast number of organizations, it's about the apps that are running on top of it. And so what you can do on top of the solution is, is what they care about. And so we say, you know, it's applicable to a broad set of use cases. It's really around, hey, how can I start doing uh, IT automation on top? How can I use this uh, as a vehicle to ensure I have compliance, uh, that can meet compliance requirements for my organization? You know, private, you know, reg specific regulatory or you know, more federal type, of federal or industry regulations. Uh, so I want to apply VDI on top of it or micro-segmentation use cases for specific apps, et cetera, right? How can I use this as a platform? That's the intent, right? And one piece I like to say that really kind of sets us apart is this, this notion of comprehensive documentation. Um, and I mentioned the whole kind of life of 
the DVDs early on. These are really living, breathing documents. I know it's kind of used a lot, but these are different. These DVDs are different, right? They're valid designs, but they're different from what you know as a reference architecture, right? Or a reference architecture typically you'll see out there in, in the market, right? Someone publishes it. You know, someone can write their own or a company writes one. And we've written them too, right? Um, but reference architecture is really kind of a point in time. There are sometimes a, a lot of hand waving and some pretty graphics and a couple, you know, tables of information. And that only goes so far, right? It doesn't tell you about things like, you know, what's the, what are the design objectives, right? Why did you make that decision? How can you justify that decision that was made? Um, it doesn't get into typically the implementation, the depth of implementation details, right? Or how you operate it or how you validate it and test it and how you continually update it. Um, so typically reference architecture is very static and stale and they're really early updated. Um, and that's one kind of big difference about the DVDs is we're constantly updating. I mean, you'll see some history in a little bit about where we're going and what we've done, and what we've done and where we're going, but we're constantly iterating these uh, to provide you guys the best uh, information as far as architecture um, and can continually improving our, 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 our designs. But we're not doing these in a vacuum. You don't, you don't have to buy these designs, right? You can get them in, in certain fashions, but they're all publicly available. It's all comprehensive documentation from, you know, planning, prep, um, you know, the bill of materials that you need, um, physical and virtual, uh, to, to the software, how you implement it across different regions, how you validate it, how you test it, how you ensure interoperability, and how you upgrade it. Those don't come in a reference architecture, right? Now, it's not to say you can't use the DVDs as reference architecture. Kind of goes back to one of my earlier statements is, is you guys in the community, you can begin to read these designs and kind of get some understanding of how these designs are being used and, what, and to learn some new techniques really to help, in fact, accelerate your career and your knowledge of our products. Uh, in fact, I would say this is a, a great resource if you're studying for advanced certifications. I will say that working on these DVDs has actually accelerated my time to achieve some of my uh, more advanced certifications like the VCI X's. So I would highly encourage you to read the designs. It will really help you, uh, particularly in that, um, in that VCAP CMA design <laughs> exam, which is a bear. Um, <laughs> and, but these are very comprehensive documentation. We'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. And like I mentioned, it's, around, it's suited around, you know, use cases, right? And, and we like to say, you know, how can we help, you know, our customers, our partners and such get the value out of a software-defined data center faster? Um, you know, we're engineers. We like to focus on the plumbing, right, and, and how things stitch together. But once we do that, we have to think about at the higher level, how can we provide things like, hey, the application is running for my organization, right, or my customer, what have you. How can I apply disaster recovery scenario on top of that? How can I do things like, you know, I'm sure I have compliance, right? Because, again, those regulatory things. And, and you know, remote office, branch office, third-party integrations, et cetera. These are just a couple, you know, eight examples of, of really the outcomes that you would want to see sitting on top of a VMware validated design, right? Um, and because that's really what it's all about. You know, once you did plumbing and you got the infrastructure, how do we now start adding on additional value on top of it for, the people that are obviously paying for you to deploy this, right? Be the customer or your own organization. Hey, Ryan. Hope that makes Yeah, man. I actually have a question from Graham Mitchell. He says, should, should they be used more like as is or can slash should they be used as a basis for design? That's a great question. Uh, I appreciate your answer to that. So, um, yes, I'll say yes to both, right? The intent is for the VMware Valley designs to be consumed uh, in a prescriptive format. Uh, we can talk about there's certain areas where we allow some, some deviation uh, and where areas where we're very prescriptive and where areas where we're not prescriptive. So the goal is for you to be as in line with the design as possible and not deviate and become another, another, another what we call sometimes, you know, jokingly, another snowflake. I hate that term, but it, it's kind of a... It, I mean, everybody uses. Um, but that's one way. We really want people to, to, to uh, take them as a prescriptive approach. We also realize that not every organization can do that. But I will say, um, we'll talk about design decisions a little bit. And I, I have made the design decisions 
over 240 design decisions for these designs available as a checklist form so you can go through them. And if you disagree with them, right, a, a specific design decisions, you can kind of figure out where your off-ramp is, right? Well, I, did, I don't agree with that, I have to make a deviation. And then, of course, we can discuss where that deviation is, and if it's okay deviation, then you should, should still be pretty much in line, right? But there's certain areas. Um, outside of that, you know, like I said, uh, you can use this as kind of a fundamental Kickstarter, right? Like if you say, this is great, but I want to make some modifications, you, you know, I want to put, instead of realize automation, I want to kind of modify this, use it as a basis for me to do a design, but I want to put VIO on top of it. Fine. Yeah, it's not, you're using it at, at that point as a reference architecture for your design, right? Um, I will say, do not submit your VCDX defense based off this design. Um, you will be frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> they will quickly figure out what you did, <laughs> so don't do that. That that's that should be a funny conversation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't don't do that. Right. Um, and actually, in fact, we don't actually have requirements, assumptions, constraints, and stuff like that built into design. You know, because those are all based on customer customer requirements. So, um, I do want to give you guys a I'll put my you know my teacher hat on for a moment and, and kind of give you guys a quick history lesson where we've come. Um, in February of 2015, right, so i got to kind of go back, Not this is representative of last year. Um, I bet that's Nick right there. Oh, okay. uh, in February of 2015, we started this uh, this, this process. Uh, Nick says he should be on soon. Um, five minutes. Um, so we started this process in February of 2015, and, uh, well, sorry, 12, 12 months before um, February of 2016. So in February 2015, we started um, engineering effort where we said we we're going to take some of the best and brightest minds in the field and our engineering. We're going to pull them together and we're going to create a design for one of the best designs we can for uh, a software-defined data center. So all months of engineering work later, uh, using folks like like um, William Lamb, Nick Marshall, Eric Gray at the time. Um, I'm going to forget a bunch of people, <laughs> um, even uh, Justin King, I think, was on that team, and Randy Jones and, and, and others, Nick, uh, Nick Gibson, right? Just brilliant guys. Um, I, I Kamal was on I that remember well. correctly, the, one of the guys that did the design guide was on that team, right? Forbes? Forbes. Uh, Forbes is now on that. And I will, I'll, I'll mention that. Great, 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 great point. I will mention that where he came in. Um, so we, we took all this collective knowledge and we said, we're going to build the best SDDC design possible and led by an incredible chief architect, uh, Phil Weiss um, and uh, Blaine Christensen. And they have just done a phenomenal job leading this, leading this team. And 12 months later, we came out with VVD 1.0. You probably saw some information called, you know, IT Automation Cloud 1.0. We kind of, we call it VVD 1.0 now. Um, and it was kind of an internal release as far as, not a lot of public documentation, right? Some stuff, some some buzz. I did a demo on the BCDR aspect, but we really sat. It's kind of went to professional services to to implement, and we kind of want to get its its feet wet. And it was very well received, especially inter internally by our by our our professional services. And then then we started working on the next release. And in July of last year, we released the VVD for SDDC 2.0. We took about three and a half months of engineering effort. At this release, we actually made it really public. And that's right, just before VMworld last year, we made it public. We made the documentation officially public. Um, we scoped down some pieces because we wanted to get it out before VMworld, and we kind of said, well, we, there's some things we, we want to give and take on there. Um, but we got out in, in, in late July uh, of, of 2016. Well, then we started the, the process to do VVD 3.0. And that came, you know, two months of engineering work later. And we added dual region support. We had dual region support in the first one. We had to make some changes in, the, in, in 2.0. 3.0, we brought dual region support. So think of, you know, kind of a New York and Los Angeles or San Francisco and, you know, L.A. kind of. In fact, San Francisco and L.A. have seen, our, seen in our documentation as examples. And we added disaster recovery between the two sites uh, again. So that took us about, you know, two months of engineering effort, right? We're starting to short, shorten the cycle because we've done the heavy lifting up front. Um, shortly thereafter, well, I will say just about that spot, right, a little bit before, um, Forbes Guthrie 
right, from uh, vreference, I think it's vreference.com, you know, I've been around the community for quite a long time in the forums and such. He joined VMware, it was the summer, summer, I think it was the summer of last year, and he's a product manager for VBDs. He is today, uh, he does an incredible job leading the direction of the VBDs uh, from a product, a product standpoint. And just the overall fantastic guy to, to work with. Uh, I was actually on a call with him yesterday. We we're talking about my new content for the VB, the next next version of VBD. So uh, that's where Forbes comes in. So a little bit later, month and a half later of engineering, we started doing things like VBD 302. Right? This is a minor release. It's a minor changes in what we call the build materials, but you start seeing some of these some of these some of these shrinking in time frame. Right, um, but what we added as well was another BVD specifically around the use case of micro segmentation. We added some additional scenario guides for how to build blueprints uh, in VR in VRLize automation um, for you know how how to use VRLize automation in the context of the BVD. So we started adding more use case type stuff on top, right? Um, and we're continuing to continuing to work on and uh, since then. We have released some early access um, material on the VBD community for our 4.0 release, um, which will be coming at some point, <laughs> um, some point soon. Uh, but it is an early access on the VBD community. That's, uh, you go to vmware.com slash go slash VBD dash community and we'll take you to the community. And there you'll actually find that checklist I mentioned. Um, but we'll get more into that in a little bit. So that's a little bit of history lesson and kind of see how we keep accelerating. Um, so, VBDs, um, before we start, you know, don't think that we're sitting in an ivory tower, you know, dictating, you know, how designs have to be done, right, and this is the only way to do it. This is just one design, right, VBD for SDC. We've taken feedback from our field, our partners, our customers, community, and said, you know, what we, we, before we start building something, we kind of have to scope it, right? You have to do that with, you know, your partner, your customer, you have to scope it, right? Otherwise, you have scope creep and things go bad, right? Um, so what we did is we wrote down, and there's a couple different examples here I'll show you, straight from the documentation you can download. We said, what do we, how, how do we want to, what objectives do we want to define before we actually build a design? And so we lay down things like, hey, you know, what type of deployment? Is this going to be a greenfield, brownfield? What's it going to look like? And we, and we chose greenfield. And, and greenfield doesn't really necessarily mean it's a net new, data center, right? It could be a parallel installation in an existing data center. Maybe you'll move your workloads over. But we're not like going in and retrofitting something you've already deployed and then ripping it around, kind of reswizzling it, um, as my friend Adam actually likes to say, um, and, and to make it, you know, a VBD, right? It's more of greenfield, move your stuff over, right? Uh, we support dual region workload domains, right? Um, dual region domains, we can support up to uh, 10,000 virtual machines, right? Which you can obviously extrapolate. Oh, that's like the vCenter, you know, vCenter limit, uh, well, at least in 6.0. And then 150 VM uh, deployments per hour, right? Uh, that's a, what we call the churn rate. How many VMs can I spin up? How many operations can I take? You know, I have to be spinning up or carrying down, right? What's that churn rate, rate need to look like? And then we also define things like availability. You know, what is the... What does availability percentages need to be for things like, you know, SDC, the, the, the management plane, the control plane, things like that, you know, the user interfaces. How much downtime do we want to take per year, right? Um, right now, we're, we're targeting around 99% of availability. Um, there are some areas where, you know, certain pieces of the SEC that we want to see more availability, right? And probably seeing some of those come out in the 6.5 release of vSphere, right, where we want to be able to add those and get a little extra availability for the platform. Um, you know, if you look at the 99%, that's pretty, you know, maybe caused, you know, by, by um, you know, the uh, availability of vCenter, right? We protect it with HA, but, you know, we don't have, you know, you know, entire high availability in the 6.0 release, 6.5, yes, we do. Okay. So there's some ideas. Thank you. Yeah. Can we? Uh, yeah. Oh. Can I? Can I? Just, can, can I just add something to that? Yes. Absolutely. So, sorry, I'm late. <laughs> Everyone. So, so in terms of the Nick Marshall coming in, Nick, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, my name is Nick Marshall. I'm an integration architect working on these here validated designs for VMware. Been at VMware what four and a half years, something like that, and. Uh, 
original V Brown bagger, but haven't been around much lately. Too much other stuff going on, unfortunately. <laughs> However, I did want to talk about the availability piece. And some people will say, whoa, 99%, that's as you've got there, an hour, over, over an hour and a half downtime a week. That's crazy. Let me just talk a little bit about the background as to why we have that number there. So we've got mm -hmm. a, a calculation in the background. And what it does is it goes through and it looks at all the different components that you've got that make up the entire SDDC, all the different management components that are in there and their individual availability um, capabilities. And then you've got uh, the, the sum of those, and, and I can't remember the exact calculation off the top of my head, plus all the, the number of physical infrastructure pieces. And you add all of that up into this supposedly industry standard um, calculation and when you take the sum of all of that it equals 99% so while there may be some components that will achieve more than that um, you, what you have to do is you have to go well the the lowest or, or the, the the lowest amount of availability for a certain component plus the highest of others means that it comes out at that now realistically I don't know anybody that would that would be happy if they had an over an hour and a half of downtime a week, or 1.7 <laughs> hours of downtime a week. But realistically, I mean, we, the, the whole point of the, the validated design, which you've, you've no doubt already touched on, is the fact that we validated it. We go through extensive testing on this to make sure that we can sustain 150 plus VMs churning every hour for weeks on end to simulate years of, 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 of uptime. Um, so, so don't don't be afraid of the oh it's only ninety nine percent. This thing's tested. Very very much so. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Nate. And uh, we did have a, a oh. question from from the audience. Uh, when when you are referring to dual region, does that encompass metro clustering? Was the question. Nick, you want to take that one? <laughs> I know yeah, the answer. Sure. Is sure. So. And the reason that we started out with regions instead of sites is because we wanted to take uh, the, the model that's worked well with AWS, having the difference between regions and availability zones, and then model our, uh, our architecture around that kind of concept. So at this stage, we've got dual region. We haven't, uh, we haven't designed for dual availability zones and therefore clustering between availability zones or clustering between regions. That's something we haven't designed for yet. Uh, I know that it's definitely on the backload, uh, backlog of stuff that we're going to be looking at in the future, but at this stage, we haven't looked at it. Thank you so much. You'll actually see some of, that, some of that, that discussion. Actually, when you read the architecture guide where it refers to the the regions and the availability zones, and you see it in the design decisions as well. You read the architecture guide. So that's a little bit about you know design objectives. We have to know what we're going to build for before we actually do anything, right? Um, and then we kind of switch gears and put on our architect's hat, hat, and we start having these lively discussions about design decisions, right? And we know what we want to build for, but now we have to start figuring out how we're going to build it. Um, and I think in the, this is regarding the 3.0 specific release where this, this number up here, but um, in the VBD 3. I think 3.0, I don't know if 3.0 has more, but um, there were 230 uh, design decisions in the uh, in the VBD. And these are really around, you know, how can we, you know, go, go about thinking about every aspect of what we, how we design it documenting it right how can we create uh, a baseline for everything we've decided to do to do build a standardization right and really help to document things like how can I easily go back and figure out why did I make that design decision or what was, what was the reasoning for that what was my what was the design decision right what was my justification for actually making that decision in the in the architecture and of course what other kind of implications could it have right whether that the implications on other other subsystems, on the existing system, or even on people, right? Or you know, time or, or what have you. And what are those implications? And then be able to document that and put that in a form that is can can be gone through as a checklist. Uh, in the architecture guide, it's not exactly as a checklist, but we have made a checklist available. You can you can you can um, you can download download today from the community. But how can we make it really really simple for you to understand? Hey, this is the design decision. 
this is what, what, what it is, this is why we did it, and here's what it may affect. And, and what it kind of looks like uh, when it's laid out, it lo looks a little something, like, a little something like this. But they're always in the in the doc. They're always located in our, our architecture guide today. Um, like I said, we do have these available in a checklist download from the community site. But you'll see here we got a, a decision ID, right? SDDC, that's the design. VI is virtual infrastructure. SDDN, that's a software defined networking. And then you see like a numerical sequence, right? It's 01. This is the first design decision we made for virtual infrastructure for software defined networking, right? Then we have the design decision itself, right? We decided to use two separate NSX instances per region, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's the design decision we made. How do we justify that? And we, we, we write our justification and, of course, any implement, implement, uh, implications it may have for, have for us, right? We now have, now since we have dual region, we must install and perform initial, the initial configuration uh, for four NSX instances separately, right? That's our, that's our impl implication. So we document those. And, and kind of when you're reading through the documentation, um, I'll bring up a copy here. Like this is an example. Uh, from the architecture guide, right? You'll see how they're how they're listed, right? Here's all the design decisions, uh, the design decision ideas, the design, de design decision, the justification, the implication. Uh, this happens to be from our early access documents for the next upcoming release. Um, but you see how they're kind of put into a checklist form, and like I said, you can download them from the community website. Uh, this is just an example again, just kind of what I showed you specifically three design decisions from our from our software-defined networking for the routing model design decisions. And, and you'll see, as you're going through the documentation, we kind of break those up you know, into virtual infrastructure. But under virtual infrastructure, you have software-defined networking. So you can kind of go down and drill into the areas. And you'll see you know, this one specifically is for the routing model. Right? So you're easy to follow and, and, and find. And, and we're going to see some things where we actually make it a, a little bit easier in the future. Any questions on design decisions? Not that I see. I like to. Yep. There's there, there's a guy. Uh, I don't know if folks uh, know who Eddie Danell is, but I like Eddie's. I particularly like Eddie's um Eddie's example because, you know, I'm not young anymore. If I can say this, but um, <laughs> if you're a good engineer, you're a good architect. You can read like all 230 30 of these, and they, you know, what made read like he says like a 1980s stereo manual, right, or like a car repair manual. Um, it may seem a little boring, but if you're a good architect or engineer and read through these, you get a very good visual for what the architecture looks looks like. If you're kind of a, you know, you can read this and come with a visual interpretation, you understand what the design looks like. And of course, we do make that a little easier. Um, I don't know if I can bring one up here. We have all the design decisions, but as you go through our architecture guide, and of course, one doesn't come up, but you'll see things like we provide you some logical diagrams, some images that actually show represent what that's this, that those are the design decisions, and here's what, here's what it looks like, right? So you can start getting that mental picture of what the architecture looks like before you do it. And of course, we supplement that with the actual implementation guidance. Nick, you want to add anything on that? Our diagrams are really pretty. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nick did a lot of them. Like Not, Nick did many of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I, thing I'll, I, I'll I think that. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think that um, there is a good mix of, of, of detail in there around, hey, you could follow all of these design decisions. And the the reality is that you might be an expert in vSphere and NSX, but you might not understand the storage. You might not understand vSAN or or you might not understand the CMP layer. You don't have no idea on vRealize automation. So you supplement each thing with the information that you know and you understand. But there's certainly enough diagrams in there and Ryan, I'm sure you'll show your big diagram at the end if you haven't already. Um, there's enough information so that you should be able to go from, I know nothing about any of things. And if you read the entire thing, you should be able to get it up and running by yourself. The idea isn't that this is for full stack engineers only. We should be able to make you a full stack engineer at the end of it. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Like the people that are studying for the makeup design, you know, and there's there's several, you know, verticals for the design exam, and that ultimately go into the VCDX. When they grab a document like this, they they find out stuff they hadn't even thought about. So we all appreciate that a lot. Yeah, I, like I said early on, you know, um, just the amount of work that you know I've been doing, 
with the VBDs and having the pleasure of working with folks like like Nick, it, it's really helped to advance my own certifications, right? Own, all the, the VCX ones, the VCATs, and stuff like that. Especially, you know, like the VRA, right? VRA to me has always been a bear. That this is the VBD really, really helped me understand the architecture just behind the product, but also how to implement it and do it in a highly available way. And I can't. I can't stress enough. If you're studying for like some of those those exams, and even the the, the NV exams, this is a great resource, an educational resource for you. And then you can start to adopt a lot of the themes that you see right into your everyday work, and hopefully be implementing the VBD one day. Um, so as far as the, inter the, the, the what we call the, the software bomb or the the, the build of materials, right? Um, each release is going to have a specific build of materials and. Um, the VBD for SCC really has these um, these kind of eight core components, right? Um, they're going to be, you know, obviously vSphere. I should change that to say vSAN and not virtual SAN finally. I need to do that. Um, NSX, right, NSX for vSphere. Site Recovery Manager, you'll see VRA is used, VRA's automation. Um, VRA's business for cloud. Um, you'll see a use of VRA's operations along with very specific management packs and content packs. I'll show you those in in a moment, kind of give you an idea, as well as we realize login site and content packs, because that's our log analytics and aggregation, interactive analytics. I call it the last mile group cause, because I usually hate looking at logs, but um, sometimes you, it's a necessity. Right? Um, and so what the stack kind of looks like um, is like this. This is kind of the base, what I call the core platform stack. And some people argue with this, this diagram, but I, li I like it. Um, at the core platform, right, there's, there's vSphere, vSAN, uh, NSX, right? You've got log insight, those operations. And then, there, yes, there is this thing that says uh, vSphere data protection. <laughs> um, let me uh, call something out here in just a moment. Um, well, I'll call out on just fun. On top of that core platform, we, we layer in now um, like the cloud management uh, platform pieces. And we layer in some pieces around BCDR, right, disaster recovery and continuity. Um, we use Virilize, Virilize Automation for a cloud management and automation platform. Uh, Virilize Orchestrators in there is our workflow engine. Uh, Virilize Business for Cloud is going to give you that IT financial management and reporting, right, for people that care how much does it cost me to run this thing, right? Um, vSphere Application is used because we do support a dual region design, and we actually support the ability to deploy the, the FPDC stack, the management stack, but be able to fail it over using, you know, all the the goodness of vSphere, vSAN, and NSX, and combining that with um, vSphere application and, and Site Recovery Manager, so you want to pick up things like VRA, a highly distributed VRA deployment, pick it up and move it to another region and reinstantiate it. Same with VRA's operations. Um, so these are kind of the core the core uh, components of uh, the VBD for SDC. Down at the bottom, you know, kind of highlighted v VMware, data, uh, VMware vSphere data protection. Um, in our docs, you will see, and Nick, keep me honest here, um, you'll see we have vSphere data protection. Used for, you know, backup and restore of the components, right? We wrote it in a way that it's not prescriptive, right? So that's why I kind of grade it out here. Uh, it's not prescriptive. It's really kind of give you guidance of, hey, you may not, you may not have an existing environment. I mean, I mean, you may have existing investments in things like Calm Vault, Net Backup, um, Networker, what have you, right? We're trying to give you some guidance around, you know, how you can do your backup and recovery. I apologize, I need to switch to my phone. My headset's starting to die. One second. While you do that, I'll talk about VDP. So well, yeah, the, <laughs> the idea the idea is that the guidance the guidance is it's still prescriptive. So we still tell you how to install it, how to design it, but what we've done is we've called out and said, well, this is just a VADP backup solution. Right, it's not. It's not specific. You could implement the exact same backup procedures or the backup jobs with the same maintenance windows and the same VM um, groups in whichever backup solution you like. Um, we test it with with VDP, um, but we realized that that is a uh, a product that has smaller market penetration than most backup solutions for various reasons, and therefore we didn't want to say, well, if you if you're not using VDP. You're not. You don't have a, a, a true VVD. We didn't want that to be a limiting factor. So it's a it's a semi-optional. Take it or leave it, but still use our backup general guidance. Yep. 
Um, you see I highlighted a change here, so it's really, really more around, you know, I can use the vSphere APIs for data protection, right? Uh, and you may see that in a, in, a, in the future release where we may be going more to focus on, you know, VADP. Fair enough, Nick? So, guys, I do have a couple questions. Uh, basically, Graham is asking, you know, what kind of business size are we looking for most of those VVD designs? I mean, he's guessing it's not for the SMB market. And also, if he wanted to deploy this in his lab, like mm -hmm. if he wanted to go full as DVC, I told him that's probably going to be a big lab because you're talking about every uh, VMware product. He wants some some guidance there. So I'll 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 take a stab at it, Nick. If you want to pop in, um, yes. I mean it's it can be a very big big environment, but you know. We have dual region, we have single region, or you can dual dual region, right? You can deploy either. We have we've actually heard this similar feedback from the field field and our customers. Um, before we had this whole concept of pods, we haven't got into that. We'll do that maybe on the on the next one. Um, but you know, we had a larger footprint to get started, right? And it was at least you know wanted to get started. You need like minimum of 12 hosts. This three pod architecture for a single region, dual region obviously doubled that. Um, we have shrunk it down to a starter with, a, with what we call a two-pod design. Again, we'll get to that later. But the minimum like footprint to get started is like you know an eight or eight nodes, right? Eight nodes for a single region, um, sixteen for a dual region dual region support. And when you when, when you, you say can, nodes, Ryan, you're talking about ESX hosts, just to be clear. ESX hosts, yeah, yeah, ESX hosts, right? The, those yeah, the, what you're going to put stuff on, and, and we break that into a management and then an initial shared edge and compute pods, right? And we'll get into that um, probably on the, on the next show. Um, but they do have some very specific requirements because the way we deploy is everything is really, you know, we're trying to make sure we have availability. So we deploy v automation, we're doing it in a highly available distributed fashion, right? Um, same thing with VRO and we're deploying a lot of our key components, right? Um, VROps, log insight. We want to make sure it scales to those, like, can it scale to 100,000, you know, VM, uh, sorry, 10,000 VMs? Can it scale to 150 VMs being turned, you know, per hour or more? Um, so, yeah, it is big. Now, um, doing this in your home lab, I think some people out in the community actually may be able to do it. I've seen some, you know, pictures of these home labs, and, and they're quite impressive. Um, I have seen people that want to do nesting, and you're not going to be able to get all of this onto, like, uh, I don't I think Nick has written an auto lab for it yet, but it would be very difficult to, uh, you know, deploy all this in a home lab. But you can make some concessions. I've actually deployed the entire VUD for a single region in an environment where we do some heavy, heavy nest, nested virtualization called OneCloud. It's our own internal cloud. But what I did is I deployed it and nested everything, and I stripped everything down so that was, I took all the redundancies out, right, in order to, you know, play around with it, right, in a lab and go spin it up and down. Um, that is possible, right? Um, but you have to start stripping things, stripping things down, um, in order to get some testing. There's yeah. no reason you couldn't do, couldn't start following a lot of these pieces in your own home lab. Excellent, thank you. Nick, you want to add anything on that? Nope, just that uh, we started big and we're going the other direction. So stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I will say, I will say this, right? There is on the community. Uh, you will see on the community go out there. There is this whole concept of a, you know, this this technical preview for a um, paper that talks about a, a consolidated management and workload where we can actually make it a little bit smaller, right? We started big, right? We want to make the best SDDC possible. We've gotten a lot of feedback from the field of how can you actually make this smaller for the SMB, right? Or maybe I can start in a home lab. I can start learning this, and so we are taking the, that, in, that into consideration. Um, with the time we have, I do want to talk about kind of the kind of dig into a little bit on the components, you know. Um, and and I, Nick, I am going to share some of the stuff on the 4.0 because it is an early access, and so I can I can officially share some of that. <laughs> hey, I'm not marketing approved. Do what you like, man. Right. Um, but I will share a little bit, right? So all the all the three, the the six, the two O, and the actually one O, one O, two O, and the three X releases were all regarding you know vSphere six six X, and we slowly incremented it. Here you can see some of the versions. 
Well, you know, we have early access for 4.0, and you will see very, very soon a new VBD for SDC coming out where you'll start to see the, what we call the kind of the 6.5 release wave, right, coming into play. So things with vSphere 6.5, updated data protection if you want to use it. You'll actually see that now we're actually uh, using Update Manager because it's built into vCenter. Um, we provide you know, guidance on that. Um, vSAN 6.5, NSX, right, we just released like, what, a week and a half ago, 6.3 is built in. You'll see virtualized operations and these very specific management packs. We, we provide you guidance of, hey, these are the management packs for, you know, all these other SDC components, NSX, Login Site, VRA, right, store the management pack for storage devices, and the very specific ones that we're putting into the bill of materials and doing all our tested and continuous validation and our scale testing with. All right, so this is one of the first sets, and then we can obviously continue over. You'll see um, Login Site's going to be revved up to, in the 4.0 and the, its relevant content packs, we provide guidance on that. VRA, seeing that going to 7.2, as well as Orchestrator and some updates um, for Vrealize Business for Cloud. So everything from that side and that, that we'll call the, the Vrealize suite side and, and such is all kind of pushing toward that that 7.2 train. Insight Recovery Manager also being being incremented as well. I believe it's 6.5. I don't know if I have a mistake there or not, but. Um, but that kind of shows you we're 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 now going to be moving in the 4.0 release, moving that, that into you know the latest and greatest technologies that we announced at at VMworld and and folks are starting to to leverage. Any questions there? No questions, but I really like that you're keeping the, everything updated. I, I know that by now people are cool, you know, deploying stuff, so it's cool to see that. Can I can I add one can I add one thing, right? Of course, man. So, so one of the things that that um, one of the benefits that that I think that is that is really um, not necessarily made. Well, maybe it is, but I really like the fact that when we do a rev, we will actually give you guidance on how to get between revisions. So we're giving upgrade guidance. So if you if you install if you had VVD three hundred two in your environment today. We're actually going to give you step-by-step -step guidance on how to get to VVD4 um, as part of the operational day two guidance. So you don't have to sit there and work through all the KB articles and get all the right patch and go, oh, is this build number compatible with that build number? And what will I will I sacrifice anything by going up? We will actually ensure that we give you, as my boss likes to say, we put you on the happy path. <laughs> yes, he does. And, you know, and, and you know that's not, not even just major major revisions. Let me just kind of touch on that real quick. We did start introducing that also between some minor releases. So if you were on 3.0, right, VBD 3.0 for SDC, and decided you wanted to go to 3.0.2, we actually in the release notes those upgrade like upgrade guidance is in the release notes there as well. And now when we're going from these major versions. Right from Vsphere six to six five between like a three o two or three a three a three dot x and a four dot x, we're providing that guidance for those even those major upgrade versions, right? So we're not going to leave you, <laughs> put you on the half path, make it easier for you guys, you know, our customers, our partners, everybody to go between versions, and, and how can we simplify it? Because if you've done it before, you're out there looking at KB, and you're just like, do I have to do my NSX manager before I do my PSCs, or do I do my vCenter? What's the order? And that, you know, and then you throw in Site Recovery Manager and all these other pieces together, it can be this complex puzzle. How can we make it so much easier for you, especially as you have all these different integrated pieces of the, of the SDC stack? Right. Um, so I'll to touch on a little bit on day two operations and as we start to wrap this up. In the next one, we're, we're going to dive deeper into the physical architecture and the virtual architecture, right? the, vir the virtualization layer and the physical layer, because um, I want to make sure we can answer questions as we go through these, these weeks. But um, we add a lot, a lot, it's not just one thing about deploying. You know, you, you got to plan, you got to prepare, you got to implement the software to find data server. Once you actually get it deployed, right, now you got to do something with it, and you got to care and feed and update it, right? We go back to what we just talked about, but just things like, you know, monitoring and learning, right? How can we help put you guys on the right path and an advanced path to, how do you need to look at things like um, 
alert, right? Uh, creating alerts, creating custom dashboards, notifications coming from Log Insight, um, and data, and, and what's the status of data protection? So, you know, an example here, we actually create some very specific um, uh, def alert definitions inside of VR Ops, right? They're specific to the VBT. We, we walk you through that, and then of course you could learn from that to even create your own, right? That may be relevant as you, you know, you add some very specific ones for your compute pods. We help we put you on a guidance that hey, add these alert definitions because they're important, but it also helps you learn how to do that, right? And in your day job, so if you need to add others or change some, you can do that. Um, dashboards, right? This is one of of Nick's uh, pieces of work right here. It's a, uh, you know, I don't want to say single pane of glass, um, <laughs> but we do use that term sometimes. Is uh, to how can you look at the overall SDC stack and how it's performing? Give you the, the easy way to say how, how's my memory CPU, you know how are all the pieces in that entire stack performing together, right? Um, is, there memory, is there memory contention? Is there CPU contention? You know, am I overcommitted? Right? What's going on? And build a dashboard that represents that easily with inside of v realize operations. Because sometimes that's a little bit of a tricky piece for people. How do we get you know how to get started? And we guide you on that path to laying this down. And then of course you can learn it as a as a jump box to say hey. Now I know how to do that. I can go do it for my compute workloads as well. Um, help define you know, what the dashboards need to look like for your compute workloads. But we provide you this, you know, quote unquote, out of the box for the VBD my management stack. Um, like I said, alert definition. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, event notifications. We walk you through some very specific ones that, to kind of guide you on the path of these are these are definitions or notifications we create in Visualize Log Insight. So when we see an issue happening, maybe you know be it the VRA appliances running out of, of disk space, right? Or you have a, you know, have a core dump. How can we enable it to send you a notification, right, up into uh, Log Insight, maybe get that over to VRLIZE operations, and then you can take the action upon that, right? So we've also we defined those, those types of elements. Business continuity, we provide things like, you know, um, what does the, uh, what does the operation, what operations then look like, how we automate it, how we orchestrate, all the parts of business, your business continuity plan. Um, yeah, so here I've got, you know, uh, backing out, right? We, we use VDP as an example, right? You can follow that, follow that to the letter if you want, or if you're using something else, you can follow the guidance. You get an idea of how to back up and recover the cover, back up and recover the entire uh, SDC management stack. Uh, not too often you're going to see this. <laughs> we need to set, start, you know, start up your SDC from scratch or shut it down. But we do provide you prescribed methods, methods, and you both see some new cool stuff. I mean, you've read about six five, and some of the ways we approach in vSphere HA to start up and shut down. Maybe you'll see in the next release how we're implementing those new features in six five, tend to the start up and shut down for the SDC stack. As we talked about earlier, patching and updating. How can we give you guys that put you on that happy path? Give you a prescribed order of um, pre-maintenance and post-maintenance, and an order of operations to go from one version, from them, say one version of a VVD to another version, whether it's a minor version or a major version. Between those, uh, post-maintenance, you know, what are validation hey, steps? Yeah, man. Uh, we actually had did have a question on the patching yeah. side since you just talked about it. So, sure. are these going to be like version specific, like only for VVD type patching, or yeah, you know, basically what we're trying to get down to is, is doing a, a compare and contrast versus things like, say, a V-block. So these, 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 these patching, patching will be very specific to the, VB, the VVD, right? So our guidance is, you know, how do you patch this environment from saying going from, you know, version 3.0 3 to version 3.02? You might have had a minor change in the bill of materials, right? For an ESX, for VRA, right? What's the prescribed order, and what are the packages you need to use to make that minor increment from one build number to another in the VBD? Um, not saying you can't use it as as an idea for how to do other environments, but they are going to be very specific to the VBD. And Ryan, can I can I just add to that? Uh, just just. I'm not sure if, if uh, my interpretation of the question was different, but one thing I did want to call out is that the, the BOM, the bill of materials, and the version of, of all of the software is standard VMware builds. Whatever you get from my.vmware.com and you download, 
this is no different. So we're not we're not giving you specific patches for issues that are found within the VVD because quite frankly we're using the same software to build the VVD as what you can download and install yourself every day of the week. There's no differences there. And just just to be crystal clear there, this is guidance. It is not a script. It is not a provi it is not you're not provided with a script and installers that you can just run. This is guidance on how to do it yourself. Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> if you're a partner, it might be a different story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we actually make it a little easier for some of the partner partner services to do. But uh, that's a whole other topic you can find on an upcoming VM Live if you're a partner. Um, good question, though. Yeah, so one thing that I, I believe we show, we, we have the major versions, but also in the in the release notes, we actually, we actually show the build number, right? So it's the same build numbers you would get as well. Now, my only caveat that I would probably particularly lay down is, listen, if you're using vSAN ready nodes, right, um, and you have a specific build recipe for those vSAN ready nodes for management stack, um, probably not a good idea to go just download the ESX image from from VMware.com, you're going to want to get the one that's specific for the, for that specific recipe for that host, but it matches up to the same build number that we have. So if you're using Dell, right, go get the Dell image of ESX to deploy and m make sure you're applying specific recipe for those vSAN ready nodes, right? So the BIOS settings, firmware settings, etc. Um, and so if you want to get started, right, like I mentioned earlier on, there's, there's this public documentation. It's ready available. You can go grab it today. Um, you can go to vmware.com slash go slash dvd dash sdbc. I'll show that in a minute. Um, and you can download the docs. There is professional services for, for this, so whether it's our certified partners that can do it um, uh, or, you know, VMware professional services, they have deployment kits and they can actually go and deploy this and do it really quickly because they do have another uh, toolkit to automate pieces of this um, instantiation, which is really nice for, for, the, for the partners. Um, and we do have certified partner architectures as well where folks like Accenture, for example, has taken, has taken the VVD and now they are deploying services built around the VVD for SDDC. Uh, 3.0 is the one that they're cur currently working on. Um, so they're building that and deploying it for, service, for our service uh, for our customers as well. Uh, the documentation, right? So the documentation is uh, freely available. Um, you can go to vmware.com slash go slash vbd dash sdc. It takes you right down to the download page where all these docs are available in PDF format. Um, you may see additional formats coming in the future, but you'll see, you know, every, like with every product, right, we have release notes, right? What's changed, what's new, you know, build numbers, a bomb is in there. The architecture guide, which I encourage you to read, diagrams, planning and prep, Implementation guidance, you know, validation, monitoring, business continuity, all those pieces are, are built in and documents are readily available. You can go download them, the entire stack today and begin reading those. Um, and I encourage you to do so. Um, there is this poster out there. If you go to bbd sdbs poster, this is kind of a, a high level architecture. It takes a lot of the core elements. You're not going to be able to zoom in and read this today, but you can download it. I'm sorry, there are no printable copies. Um, I could not get budget to print these. <laughs> um, but you might be able to take them to your area Kinkos, FedEx Kinkos, and get them printed. But um, it really kind of digs into the core tenets of a lot of the design principles and, and kind of takes a lot of those pieces that you would see in the architecture guide and you know, picks out the, 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 the high points of the things you need to understand, whether it's the platform services, how NSX is delivered, the idea between the, pod, the the what is a pod architecture, or how does the leaf and spine network look? You know, how are we providing L2 within the rack? What does the distributed switches look like? Um, even down to how at the bottom there, how the uh, bottom left area, how we're doing distributed logic or networking with NSX, right? And how we're actually putting the SCDC solutions like VRA, VRO, Log Insight, uh, Virulence Operations on top of NSX, because then we can do cool things like be able to move them around between regions during a disaster uh, event. So you can go download this today. I encourage you to, to check that out and uh, we hope to have a, a revision very soon for our next release. Um, and kind of with that, I think we're at the, are we at the top of the hour yet, Ariel? Or the, 
Well, well we're hour. technically at the bottom of the hour, but yeah, we, bottom we, hour. We, yeah. Yeah. this is yeah, a, a we, good, we are approaching the end of the hour. Yeah, this is a good moment yeah. to start so, since you sent out the links, and I think uh, those will help a lot of people start reading. Yeah, so that's where we kind of want to stop here, and where we want to pick up next, and I can, I'll give you a preview, right? So where you guys can go begin downloading some of this material, and I'll see if I don't show all my 4 stuff here. <laughs> um, where we'll try to pick up next is start to dig in a little bit on the physical infrastructure, right? We're, we're kind of leaving off of what do we need for physical infrastructure? What are the ideas regarding these these pods? Um, so I want to dig into the physical infrastructure, you know, what's the layout that you look like, and then we'll start digging into things such as the concept of the virtual infrastructure, how we take, you know, create these pods of infrastructure, what do they do, what are their roles, um, how are they laid out, and we'll dig into the the physical infrastructure and the virtual infrastructure on the next go around next week. All right. So one one thing I'll do before we stop the recording, I'll I'll open up microphones. Uh, if anybody wants to ask any questions, uh, just raise your hand using the interface, and I'll open up your microphone. Well, so we did have one last question that was, uh, sp you know, specifically for Nick, and that was around the mastering vSphere series and whether or not there was going to be a new version for 6.5. Wow, I uh, <laughs> I get that question a lot. Maybe I need to post an FAQ or something. Uh, no, I'm not doing a mastering vSphere for six five. Maybe maybe you hit it. You heard it here for, first. That officially, no, I'm not. I'm not doing a mastering vSphere six five. However, there are. I, I know that there are other publishers that are doing mastering vSphere esque type books for this release. So uh, you might like to uh, check out. The other works that are available, um, I've been. This is this is my new book, effectively. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm one of many authors, but I tell you what, there's just well, there's there's more work that's gone into this than there has been into uh, mastering vSphere. That's for sure. This is a, this is a tome. Thou well, uh, well, over 1,500 pages. Um, mastering vSphere is like 850 odd pages, 900 pages. This thing is is almost double that now. I bet you feel this is like the evolution, right? Yeah, well, it's all the products, not just one, right? Exactly, and and mastering everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like like I said earlier, and you, if if you read through these docs and you go through it, it's you really learn a, an epic amount of information um, across all the products and and why things, how how we use it and why we use it in that way. Um, I will say there's also a, there there there's lots of videos out there, right? We've got some. If you go to the VMware.com, I'm sorry, uh, go to YouTube.com/VMware. Look at the VVD playlist. There's a bunch of videos out there that that, that I did some conceptuals and, and demos to kind of walk you through this architecture, key pieces of the three dot the two dot X and three dot X architecture. Hopefully we'll we'll update those for four dot X and some of the up, the upcoming changes. But you'll learn a lot. Right, it's very educational. Um, there is a hands-on lab too. That's a simulated lab that kind of gives you a walkthrough. You go to the VMware, you go to the, the, VM, the VMware hands-on labs, and you can launch that lab anytime. And it's a simulated environment, but it's walking you through the architecture. That the items that you actually see here on the page, we walk you through a lot of those bits, um, so you can kind of get a better understanding of the architecture. There's tons of resources out there for you. That's awesome. Um, that's about the fourth time I've heard Nick say that he wasn't writing that book. I think you had a baby between. You didn't have a baby, a baby after you were at the last book. <laughs> so that's taking yeah, up some I, time as I well. I seem to have. I, I seem to have babies and move house, or while I'm writing books, I'm crazy. Yeah. Well, m move from California back to you know, New Zealand, so or Australia. New, New Zealand. So. You, yeah, that's heresy. Um, yeah. For those I know, that right? don't know, I'm back in Australia <laughs> now. So. Morning for you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. I'll stop the recording now.